gonna bought you flowers I can buy myself flowers And held your hand And I can hold my hand You said, what are you bringing to the table? Men are tired. I'm not bringing nothing to the table, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you want a woman to bring something to the table, go to IHOP. Go to the restaurant where you can tip her, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I just came to the realization why I'm single. Every guy that I'm like, oh yeah, he's attractive. Okay, this is not supposed to be offensive, but I see their wives and they just look like so like, I thought these men weren't like, you know, big strong, tough girls. And the rise of online dating and the rise of feminism has taught women that they are not to blame for any poor choices. Every poor choice is glamorized. So if you want to be a sex worker, it's great. If you want to post in bikini pictures online, it's fine. If you want to be in with it, every poor choice is glamorized. I want you to guess my body count. This is always like, just funny to me. What do you think? Eight. Eight? Hmm. I feel like once I say my body count, you're going to be like, oh, multiply it by 10, multiply it by five. I haven't said a word. Okay. Okay. Let me make this very clear because, you know, these people, they try to, like, you know, push a certain narrative. I stand for traditional feminism, the equal rights and opportunity in a society and in political systems and, and jobs and stuff like that for women. I stand for that for sure. Right. There's a difference between that and modern day feminism, especially when it comes to relationships. Modern day feminism is pushing and telling women you don't need a man that men shouldn't lead. Don't be a traditional woman. But he should still be a traditional man, though, you know? He's still got to pay for dates and take you out and treat you like a lady. But you don't got to treat him like the man, right? He should, he should accept you. You know, go have fun with as many men as you want. He should still accept you for you and love you for you. Go out there and dress how you want to dress. If you want to show the nip, show the nip. He should still treat you like a wife. This is absolutely bananas. It's absolutely delusional. And it's going to keep women single for a very long time, bro. Until you wake up and realize, no, it don't work like that. Okay? <laughs> Hello, everyone. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If this is your second, third, fourth time watching one of my videos and you are not yet subscribed, we already go together. Okay, make it official and hit that subscribe button. Today, I'm going to be talking about dating in the modern landscape and how feminism has kind of, kind of ruined it. Like... 50 percent 51 55 percent well it's not like when feminism was first started the founders intended for things to end up this way but unintentionally it has you have stolen my dreams you know the modern dating scene is treacherous i'm so happy i'm not in it anymore i never want to go back to the streets and one tool that has been very helpful for me in my relationship is an app called paired paired is an app that is great for all couples no matter what stage they are at in their relationship whether you've been together for a years and are looking to spice things up or are just in the early stages of dating, Paired is a fun way for you and your partner to get to know each other on a more intimate level through quizzes, activities, and games. The app is very easy to use and once you and your partner have linked your accounts, you will both have access to a huge library of content to choose from. And when I say huge, I mean huge. Every subject area of a relationship is touched on, such as finances, intimacy, conflict management, communication, relationship growth, fun, excitement, everything. The cool thing about Paired is that you and your partner don't have to be in the same room to complete the activities. They are done individually, and once you both complete a quiz, the app will compare your answers to your partner's answers. And I really enjoy doing the quizzes because it's interesting to see how I see myself versus how my partner sees me. Personally, I think I'm the cheapest one in the relationship. I love a discount. I love a sale. And when I did the quiz about penny pinching, he thought he was the cheapest person in the relationship. So I thought that was funny because we both think we are the cheapest ones in the relationship. And it also was able to open up a conversation about finances and spending. And the app also has a really cool timeline feature. So you and your partner can lock pictures and memories in a timeline just for the two of you. I really enjoy the app and I think you will too. Click my link below to get a seven day free trial and 25% off paired premium so you can maintain and deepen your connection with your partner.
there. A special thanks to Paired for sponsoring this video. When I say feminism has ruined dating, let me be more specific. First wave feminism was necessary. It gave women the right to be legally recognized as persons, the right to own property, the right to vote, employment rights, all the good stuff that I think we can all agree that women should have, except Pearl. Right, why women shouldn't vote? Yes, yeah. But everything that followed first wave feminism has actually backfired in many ways. And one of the ways it has backfired is hookup culture. Feminism grew substantially in the 1960s along with the sexual revolution, with feminists arguing that a woman should have complete control over her own body. The sexual revolution was successful in changing societal norms and casual sex became socially acceptable. Also at at this time in the 1960s, the pill became available, which further allowed women to separate procreation from sex. Over the decades, the effects of the sexual revolution have only amplified, and it has had a negative effect on modern dating and culture as a whole. Because casual sex has become the norm, many women who are looking for committed relationships with men are having a hard time in the dating pool because a significant portion of men are only interested in casual sex. Surprise, surprise, I'm not saying anything new. I want you. I want to get to know you. I like you. No, you don't! You just want to touch my private parts! In a Pew Research poll about online dating, 13% of women said they use dating apps to find a partner for casual sex, while 31% of men said they use it for the same reason. <laughs> I still feel like 31% is low, but okay. True. Despite the hippies in the 60s fighting for women to be free to be the hoes they've always aspired to be, it's not quite working out the way they thought. Since the sexual revolution in the 1960s, women's happiness over the decades has actually been declining. Economists Betsy Stevenson and Justin Wolfers analyzed the happiness trends of Americans and Europeans between 1970 and 2005, and they found a surprising result. <laughs> women rated their overall life satisfaction higher than men in the 1970s. Thereafter, women's happiness scores have decreased, while men's scores have stayed roughly stable. By the 1990s, women were less happy than men. And this largely has to do with the change in gender roles as a result of feminism, but more on that later. In terms of hookup culture, many women are unhappy with how casual sex has ruined dating. Many women find themselves in situationships rather than relationships. And for those of you who are not familiar with a situationship, it's essentially when two people are in a relationship without the title of a relationship. They will go on dates, they may meet each other's friends and families, but they don't actually give each other the title of boyfriend or girlfriend because deep down, at least one of them in the situationship still wants to sleep with other people. And if one of them tries to make it official, that is usually when the situationship ends because a committed relationship <laughs> was, was never the end goal for at least one of the people in the situationship. So yeah. uh, I actually have a question. What? Um, why are we? Why are we? Yeah, you Again? know, we've been talking for a while. I know, three years, I told you already though. I know, but just like, three years is a bit long. Look, you're mine, mm -hmm. and I'm yours. But you're not mine yet, because I haven't asked you out yet. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Hookup culture also puts men and women at a greater risk for STIs, unplanned pregnancies, as well as emotional effects. Yes, hookup culture has emotional effects on men and women. Here's why hookup culture is probably not the best thing for your heart or your soul. Whenever we have sex with someone, we're creating this chemical called oxytocin, and oxytocin helps us to bond with people. So even when you think that you're having sex with someone just for the fun of it, what you're doing is bonding with them. And there's been studies that show that people that grew up in the hookup culture have something called bonding ruptures. And so what that means is you bond with someone and then you rupture. You bond with someone and then you rupture. Meaning that you're creating these bonds and then tearing them apart by not continuing the relationship. Oftentimes people are going through heartbreak and they don't really realize it. And then the, the part about your soul, your soul is the house of your emotions. You're dysregulating yourself and dysregulating your emotions when you're doing this bonded rupture. Another unintentional consequence that modern day feminism has had on dating is the change in gender roles. Prior to feminism, couples in traditional households often had a stay-at-home wife that tended to the home and children while the husband worked to support the family. However, with the success of the feminist movement, a large wave of married women entered the workforce along with their male counterparts while still taking responsibility for a large portion of the childcare and home responsibilities. I think feminism 
feminism is the worst thing that ever happened to women. Our job used to be no job. We had it so good. We could have done the smart thing, which would have been to continue playing dumb for the next century. And then all these women had to show off and be like, we could do it. We could do anything. Bitch, shut up. Don't tell them the secrets. As a result of this change in gender roles, the independent woman trope was eventually born, and in recent years, the syndrome. And many men have heard this message loud and clear. Like, I hear women say this all the time. I know a lot of you sisters be like, chivalry is dead. Don't you? Don't y'all feel that way? Like, men aren't gentlemen anymore? That's right. Chivalry is dead. And women killed it. Morgan Stanley predicts that 45% of women between ages 25 and 44 will be single and childless by the time 2030 rolls around. And for many women, this is great. Research shows that women who have never been married and have no children tend to be happier than men who have never been married and have no children. Just ask Chelsea Handler. Guess what? I just woke up and it's one o'clock in the afternoon. I get to sleep to however late I feel like it because I don't have any children. Men benefit from marriage because they calm down, they become less inclined to take risks, they tend to earn more money when married, they tend to be healthier and live longer when married. Men thrive in marriage more often than women do. The idea of having to work full time and still be responsible for raising children is losing its appeal with many women. And we have seen this reflected in the birth rates which have been steadily declining in developed countries around the world. Feminism in Korea is at another level and they have channeled this energy of going against the patriarchy into simply just not partaking in their womanliness within the society, in some ways going as extreme as wanting to kill men. The level of feminism can be best represented by the four P movement, not B as in the letter B, but the term P, which means to be against or not. First, starting with P Hun, which means no marriage, P Yone, which means no dating, P Chusan, no kids, and P Sex, which means no sex. And many economists see this as a concern because we are currently below replacement level. But what is the solution? Going back to traditional gender roles where women stay at home and men go to work is not feasible for most people because the cost of living is so high that most households need two incomes to survive. And childcare is expensive. I only have like $3.50, so it's hard, super hard. If women are going to be incentivized to get married and have children, there needs to be more more economic support for families, otherwise birth rates will continue to decline. Another way that feminism has unintentionally ruined dating is the hashtag MeToo movement and the rise of women oversharing on TikTok like this psycho woman. I am a alone with my son, by myself, a woman, and a male approached me in a parking lot. He's excuse me miss and I don't know why in the hell he was approaching me or what he was trying to do and before he i mean he was probably 30 feet from me when he said excuse me ma'am and i turned around and i literally yelled at him and i said do not approach me and he like immediately started going in the other direction and i just kept saying it over and over and over i said do not approach me do not approach me and i said you do not approach women in a parking lot i just kept saying do not approach me many men have said they are now afraid to approach women because they don't want to be accused of harassment or be called a creep and a few months ago there was a little bit of a back and forth between youtuber michelle mcdaniel and abba and preach over this topic michelle had made a video comment on women filming themselves in the gym and exposing men for looking at them and many men in the comments of Michelle's video said this is why they don't approach women anymore and so Michelle made a video where she responded to her commenters and her response was that from her own experience this isn't true she hadn't noticed a decrease in the amount of men who approach her and so Abba and Preach responded to Michelle and this is a clip from their response video I have not noticed 
a decrease in the men coming up to Michelle uh, section of my life. In fact, I've noticed an increase. And I, I personally would think that it would be decreased with the amount of men saying, we're just not going up to women anymore. Okay, this is like people saying it's snowing where I am because it's snowing where I am, global warming doesn't exist. What are you talking about? Just because you don't see it as a hyper attractive woman. You kind of look good. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not actually happening. You have to think, what are the stats out right now? How many people are actually checking out of dating? If you look at all the studies, men as a whole have been checking out of dating in, in large numbers. In fact, this has been one of the most recent findings. What is it? 69% of men report being single, where only 34% of women report being single. It was like 51% of men say they lost all interest in dating altogether, in large part because it feels unwelcoming, because they feel like... So it doesn't matter what your personal experience is, even if you want to go off of that. What the numbers show is that men as a whole have been approaching a lot less. And the very few times that they do choose to do so, they just do it on online. The statistic that Abba mentioned is from a Pew Research research poll which found that 63% of men under age 30 describe themselves as single compared to only 34% of women in the same age bracket describing themselves as single. At first glance, that math makes no sense. If all of these women are in relationships and the men aren't, who are the women dating? <laughs> Each other? Our top winner in the showcase is gay. If I had to guess, I would bet that a significant amount of women under 30 are in situationships, so in their mind, it's a relationship, but in the guy's mind, it ain't. But also, it's likely that a significant portion of women under age 30 are dating older men because on average, older men tend to be more financially established than men below age 30. 30. And women tend to be hypergamous, meaning they prefer to date men of higher socioeconomic status. A lot of guys are struggling because women have higher uh, higher standards now and, and male attention is worth nothing so, nowadays. So in other words, the dating sites made the rich richer, the poor poorer. Yes. 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 It's like yeah. stimulus checks. Interesting. A lot of guys don't even know what they're yeah. up against in, in the current dating marketplace as to like why it's so competitive. So what I've always said, it, like feminism, what it's inadvertently done, it's, it's actually given all the leverage to the top 5% of men. Yeah. Because what happens is woman earns or gets her own career makes more money becomes successful well now a large pool of candidates that would have mm -hmm. been a great husband and or potential boyfriend this guy doesn't make that's the factor yeah, you're they, saying. they want to date their equal exactly, or above exactly right so women we know women on a balance probabilities do not date below their socioeconomic status they want to date at least bare minimum where they're at or preferably above so as women make more money become more successful now their pool of men well, drops down with it and they want to date up so it's given the leverage inadvertently to a lot of the, high, the higher status men regardless of what the story is behind those statistics there is a large amount of men under age 30 who are not in relationships and it is true that many men are no longer interested in pursuing women and there is no shortage of women who take to tiktok to complain about this for the guys i have this conversation with my female friends i think like I'm not even kidding, once a week. But most of my girlfriends say that whenever they're out, they never get approached by guys. How I feel after going out in public and getting zero compliments, zero people approaching me, zero people asking me for my number when this is a known thing for girls to experience. Y'all, I could not relate more. Like I swear, not even the construction workers want me. Like I could walk in New York by a construction site. Nobody would say anything. I know this isn't something that you should want, but after a while, it's like, damn. Men feeling disaffected has become such a pervasive problem that movements like the Passport Bros, Big Tao, Red Pill have all been born, which focused on men's issues in society and in the dating sphere. And as toxic as some of the people in those communities can be, I understand why they exist. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. I would like to hear what you guys think. Whatever your thoughts, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you are not yet subscribed, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers and I would really like to get there this year. If you'd like to find me on other social media platforms, you can find me on Instagram. I also have a Patreon account for those of you who would like to support me monetarily. And thank you to the small group of you who are supporting me on Patreon. I appreciate it so much. If you like this video and you would like to see more like it, I will have two more videos linked for you in the end cards. A special thanks to Paired for sponsoring this video. Take care. Bye.